In this video, we're going to take a look at how the roots, x-intercepts, and zeros of a function are related. And we're going to do this by looking at the equations and the graphs of the polynomial function. So the function that we're going to take a look at as our example is this one uh, right here, f of x equals x to the power of 4, etc. Um, but we're going to use graphing technology to kind of speed this up a little bit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go into Desmos, and I've typed in the equation over here to the left. And I've graphed it here. And if we take a look at the x-intercepts, we can see there's an x-intercept at negative 3. There's another one at negative 2, and also one at 2. So let's go back to our graph and our notes. And let's draw a rough sketch. So the graph comes down. It hits negative 3, goes back up to negative 2, hits the y-axis comes back down, hits only the x-axis right at 2, and then goes back up. So we can see that our x-intercepts are at negative 3, negative 2, and positive 2. Now what I want to write on the bottom is just for myself and for you, you actually, um, to know what the scale is. So I'm going to put a scale, and the scale that I used in decimals was negative 10, to positive 10 for the y, sorry, for the x-axis. And for the y-axis, it was from negative 10 to positive 30. So we know that this was quite high, and uh, if we go back to look, it was actually at 24. So if you want to label that, you can too. Now, we're, next we're going to compare this by factoring the function. So. Um, let me rewrite it so that we can see it down here. So we have f of x equal to x to the 4 plus x cubed minus 10x squared minus 4x plus 24. So we look at the last number again to determine our possible zeros. And our possible zeros are the factors of 24. So we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 12, and plus or minus 24. Lots of possible factors. So taking a look, I know that if I just plug in 1, there's no way for me to actually get 0 here. So let's try the next number, 2. So when we plug in 2, uh, 2 to the 4 is 16, plus 2 cubed, I get 8 minus 10 times 4 is 40, minus 4 times 2, which is 8, and then plus 24. So using my technique that I had done before, 16 plus 8, that gives me 24, and then 24 plus 24 is 48, and then I also have negative 48, so that actually gives me 0. Great. So I'm going to draw my little chart. I'm going to use synthetic division, just because it's faster than long division. Place the 2 on the outside, because that is a 0. And my coefficients from the polynomial are 1, 1, negative 10, negative 4, and 24. So we're going to do the synthetic division process. And I get a remainder of 0, which is exactly what I want. Now when I take a look at this a uh, new polynomial, my new polynomial is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. Don't forget it used to be power 4, so now it's going to be a power of 3 here. And then my next possible zeros are very similar to what it was before, but there are some that are now missing because the only factors of 12 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. Now again, I can see that when I plug in 1, there isn't any way for me to get something that would give me 0. So I'm going to try actually 2 again. So when I plug in 2, I get 8, 3 times 4, which is 12, minus 8, minus 12. So I can see the 8 and the minus 8, 12 and the negative 12, they cancel to give me 0. So 2 actually is a factor again. Now remember, we're not going back to the beginning polynomial, but we have this new polynomial 
that we're going to do synthetic division with. So I have 1, 3, negative 4, and negative 12. So we're going to do the synthetic division again. And we get a factor of 0. And so just to recap what I have, f of x. So I started off with x to the 4 plus x cubed minus 10x squared minus 4x plus 24. Now, when I factored or found the first zero, it was two. So my two is a zero, which gives me x minus two as a factor. So the other factor, once I divided it by the x minus two using the long division here, I get x cubed plus three x squared minus four x minus 12. And then I factored again and found that another x minus two was another factor, did the synthetic division, and now I have this new polynomial here as my next factor. So I get x squared plus 5x plus 6. And I can actually factor this quadratic equation here, and that gives me x plus 2 again, and x plus 3. So when I take a look, Oh, sorry, not again, so x plus 2. So my zeros from this function are equal to 2 and 2, which I can just write once. But I'm going to write it twice to emphasize something later on. x plus 2 will give me a 0 of negative 2. x plus 3 gives me a 0 of negative 3. So notice that these zeros of the function here, they happen to actually be the same as the x-intercepts that I got from my graph from up here. So they are related to the x-intercepts. Now, if I set the polynomial function um, f of x, so this whole expression equal to 0, and I solve this equation, which now equals 0, to determine the roots, I will find that I will get the same roots. So if I did a process, it's actually the same process. So finding the roots and finding the zeros, we're going to get the same factors, x minus 2, x minus 2, x plus 2, and x plus 3. So it's just that I'm not going to write zeros this time. I'm going to write x equals, and we have 2, 2, negative 2, and negative 3. So recall, if you recall from last year, um, that the roots of an equation are the solutions to an equation. So notice that the roots of the polynomial equation can be determined by the x-intercepts, and that's of the graph. Or it is called the zeros of the corresponding polynomial function. So remember the roots, x-intercepts, and zeros actually are all related depending if it's from the equation, the graph, or the function. Now, we're going to take a look at this a little bit more in depth. So we refer to the graph in step one. Uh, notice that the x-intercepts, it divided the x-axis into four intervals. So let's identify the four intervals and indicate whether the function is positive, and positive meaning that it's above the x-axis, or if it's negative, meaning that it is below the x-axis. So let's just take a look back at the graph here. So what I mean that it divides it into four intervals, if I draw lines here, I'm not going to draw that because they're not asymptotes, I'm just showing you where the division is. So we have this part here, this part here, and I'm going to draw one more line over here. So notice that this part of the graph to the left of the red line, this graph was positive. In between the two red lines, notice the graph is negative. Between the 0, negative 2, and positive 2, notice that the graph goes up and it is positive. And then in the last interval, where x is greater than 2, the graph is positive again. So just to help me out a little bit, I'm going to place this on a number line. And I'm going to try to match it with these bars here. 
So we'll say that's negative 3, and that's negative 2, and this is 2. So just drawing a really rough graph of what we had above. It hit negative 3, went below the x-axis, hit negative 2, went above, and then it went back down to hit 2, and then it shot back up again. So notice that this was positive, this was negative, this was positive, and in the fourth interval, it was positive again. So to take a look at these intervals, I'm going to write these intervals in with symbols. So the interval to the most of the left is x is less than negative 3, which is this left side here. Then we have the interval from negative 3 to negative 2, and then negative 2 to 2, and then x is greater than 2. So we can say that the sign is positive, negative, positive, and positive. Now notice that the sign of f of x, it changes if the graph crosses from one side of the x-axis to the other. So notice that it changes from positive to negative because it went through the x-axis. However, notice that there are two identical zeros. Now, remember that we had two and I wrote it out two times. So we call this, we wrote out the two two times. So that happens when, notice that the graph hits the x-axis and the graph is positive and then it shot back up. And it was still positive. So the sine of f of x stays the same. So when that happens, you're going to get actually two or maybe more identical zeros. So I'm going to give the example that that was at x equals two. Now, if a polynomial factor, sorry, if a polynomial has a factor x minus a, and it's repeated n times, then x equals a is called the zero of multiplicity n. So in other words, multiplicity of a zero is the number of times a zero of a polynomial function occurs. So in the polynomial function above that we saw, we had f of x equal to x plus 3 x plus 2, and then we had x minus 2 all squared. So from here, we can say that this function has a polynomial, has, sorry, has a 0 of multiplicity 1 at x equals negative 3, so it only occurs once, has a 0 of multiplicity 1 at x equal to negative 2, which is the second factor, and it has a 0 of multiplicity 2 when x equals 2 and that's because it's squared okay and remember you can tell that it's going to be squared because it hits the x-axis and then it goes back up in the same direction